they don't really like me Cause I go fuck your bitch and fuck your mom and I Cat Williams recently spoke out against countless powerful Hollywood figures in a podcast with Shannon Sharp, and they are he not happy. Crazy. What makes Cat's expose so dangerous is that tens of millions of people around the world believe he is telling the truth. This man is speaking against the evils of this world. Thank you, Cat Williams. This generation is hungry for the truth. Thank Cat you, Williams Cat, really topped it off this the, 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 the beginning of the year. You. They like, he really, me for talking about he really kicks it off. Before the thing came out, he really kicks he it off. To suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. Now, a lot of what Kat said in this podcast cannot be proven true or false, but because he is funny, a good storyteller, and most importantly, confident with his words, this allowed him to convince millions that he's telling the truth. Plus, we all know that celebrities don't often speak their true thoughts on the industry or politics out of fear of being canceled. However, some things he said are just straight up lies. I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year. <laughs> From the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. My next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world. So apparently, Kat read the entire encyclopedia and read eight nonfiction books every single day from age eight to age 12. This is impossible. And it's a lie. Throughout this entire podcast, <laughs> yeah, that nigga was, in bold he was telling the truth lies, about a lot of shit, but a lot of shit was questionable. Nobody knows why liars lie. Like a and lot of times, he was actually just trying Kat to be funny. This in this middle ground where nobody can really. But a lot of niggas is telling the truth. Don't if know that lying, if he's telling a joke, if he's on drugs, if he has a mental illness, or if he is clearly exposing the dark and sinister nature of Hollywood. So today, I am going to give you as much context as possible so you can make that decision for yourself. Starting with his earliest introduction to Hollywood on the set of his very first movie. Classic. Next, where Cat played the role of Money Mike. But in the script, Cat alleged that Money Mike was originally supposed to be violently assaulted. The truth of the matter is- Don't give a fuck what Mike nobody got to say about Friday at the Knicks. Cat Williams Classic. had to take the risk in front of the studios. It's too many fucking quotables in that movie that for it to just be, nah, that shit was was, nah, fuck that. That shit is classic. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. Ice Cube, who wrote, produced, and acted in the film, denied these allegations. Second thing I want to clear up, it was never, I would never shoot a scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. I do agree with Cat Williams that Rape is never funny. But that Boondocks episode, that shit was funny, bro. I'm not going to hold you. If you check out any of my movies, they're not raunchy. But it's because Kat said things like this throughout his interview caused fans to cast doubt on anyone who denied his claims. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. Do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Cat believes he has a more legitimate and honorable legacy than the other comedians he has been associated with throughout his career. These men, Cat says, have formed a gang in Hollywood that actively steal and or blackball young entertainers' careers, which drives them into madness. For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that listen they got a gang on that side they know what it and is and I actually do they believe know that who the gang is all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets and this is the age of truth and 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 the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies Cat only mentions three of these group members by name Steve Harvey Cedric the Entertainer and Ricky Smiley but you will know 
notice throughout the video he makes bold accusations about many other massive stars like Kevin Hart and Martin Lawrence. Are they also a part of the gang? Well, that's up for you to decide. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that <laughs> never do an interview. Oh, <laughs> Anyways, let's start with Kat's claim that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey stole his material. But first, I'm gonna steal your attention for just a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. This is the joke that Kat is referring to, which was originally yeah, performed he stole in 1998 on BET's he stole the joke Comic View program. It. He stole it's it and remixed it. You flossing in a six shit converter. Using physical comedy, Cat mimics someone trying to assess why their car just broke down while the music is blasting. The alleged theft came from Cedric the Entertainer two years later on the original Kings of Comedy tour, which was in 2000. The premise of Cedric's joke was that white people are obsessed with the moon and space. He says black people are not, but if they gotta go to space, then they would drive the spaceship like this. We drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter. Nigga, we, nigga, we... We get us a cigarette, nigga. We get us, we be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72 dude, nigga. We get us. Now, when you consider the music cue, which is not very common in stand-up comedy, that already looks suspicious. Then the side-by-side -side comparison- He just remixed it. Cedric That's all it is. similar physical movements that Cat did. He just Cedric remixed the shit. he did not steal the joke, and that if Cat was so upset about it, he had 30 opportunities to speak up. Cat say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like, I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things like- Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have no. a conversation? With Kat? I've seen this guy 30 times. Like, dog, if you literally was that upset, upset about, about it, it, like, dog, just why you him and say, hey, yeah, hey, why you say nothing? Like, that don't even make sense. But Kat says that Cedric apologized about stealing the joke years ago and is now lying to the public that he never stole it in the first place. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times. Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? So imagine how a young Cat Williams felt seeing his best joke being stolen by one of the biggest comedians in the world on the largest grossing comedy tour in history. We never wrote anything. Remember when Cedric the Entertainer Niggas still shit all the time, but I can see how he would feel jokes. about That's that. Why he's called the Entertainer. He did four comedy Especially because he wasn't even Cat Williams at the time. He was like the cat in the hat or some shit. Noticing all the backlash, Cedric responded to Cat's comments on Instagram. Revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Cat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his. Cedric added, I'm a grown ass man, and none of that shit going to go like you think. But Cedric isn't the only one that stole Cat's material. Steve Harvey's theft of Cat's jokes is arguably much worse. At the 2005 BET Comedy Awards, Steve Harvey introduced a hot upcoming comedian to the stage by the name of Cat Williams. Cat hit the stage and absolutely dominated the crowd with his joke about Steve Harvey stand up was is really not even that funny. Crazy right now. What is gas? Six hundred dollars a damn gallon right now. Man, he is a fire. He is a fire fucking host for Family Feud. Don't get me wrong, but stand up was Steve Harvey. Eh. How much money you got? Gas is entirely too high. Used to be. If you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard. Then Steve Harvey did a joke about gas prices three years later in his comedy special, Still Trippin'. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. Yeah, he stole it. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Like, at least Cedric remixed the fucking joke. This nigga, <laughs> he actually just straight up stole it, bro. Talking, be on your phone. Hey, what's happening? He, he just straight up stole it. Cleaning the windshield. It's hard to see this as anything other than blatant theft. Nigga, he just straight up there. stole it. He continued to expose Steve's long history of suspicious behavior. It started with why Bernie Mac. That situation is actually way worse than the Cedric shit. Do you consider yourself 
a king of comedy? They consider that. Oh, that. After Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about, the kings. Yeah. They came. Bernie Mac was, was the true king of comedy. King. Out of all I got four the of them. Offer, then what happened? But I turned it down. So why? Because you shit on Bernie, and I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king. You. Now there has been an infamous beef between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac that fans have known about for years. There were often arguments between the four comedians of who should be the closer or finale of the tour. Since Bernie was a much funnier comedian, Steve Bernie would get was funnier by the crowd when he performed after Bernie. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is everybody was fucking knew that tour. Bernie was funnier Tell than the all them niggas. It was Steve's tour. Not it was gonna be called the Kings of Comedy, it was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you gotta close if it's your and tour. And Bernie Mac Harvey was carrying them niggas. just ended up being the host of the tour and not And this shit wasn't even his tour. Routine ...because he just couldn't make the audience laugh as hard as Bernie. D.L. Hewley, who was also on the tour, even said that Steve never thought Bernie would become successful and when he started getting more opportunities, he became jealous. You feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time and Bernie Mac not so much? Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. So yeah, I think that, you know, Steve at one point was, you know, uber successful and then Bernie started to, cause he didn't ever think he would get the opportunity he got. But once he did, America loved him. Like we all kind of knew they would. And he decided to go a different way. Eventually, Bernie got sick of Steve hating, realized his worth and exited the tour, which ended up forcing all four guys to split up. We split up. You wish you would've stayed and kept it together, could've kept it together we, a couple of- we, we tried everything, but- He was a hating ass old head, you know, bro. Dudes, Felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. Steve basically claims that Bernie went. My nigga, you was a hating ass nigga, bro. Guys. And Cat didn't like that. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? To be a movie you star. called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Allegedly, Steve even called the producers for the heist comedy film Ocean's Eleven to steal the role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. Ocean's Eleven featured a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and Casey Affleck, among others. The film became a huge critical and commercial success, earning over $450 million at the worldwide box office. Having a substantial role in a film of this magnitude helped the rising trajectory of Bernie Mac's career. An infamous GQ article from 2003 released. Yeah, Bernie, Bernie Mac was him. He was actually the Steve true king of comedy from the very beginning. Overall, and Steve Pat knew is that obviously shit. Obviously upset about Steve stealing material, but ironically, he was more upset that Harvey tried to lie and claim that Bernie went Hollywood on the Kings of Comedy when, in reality, Steve was so jealous of his success that Bernie couldn't take it anymore and quit. And now that he gone, you gonna act like he wanted to be a movie star? You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought he was. Y That's a fact. On him. The king is. That the is an first. actual fact. Period. Every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. But Cat Williams and Steve Harvey's beef did not stop there. A few years later in 2008, a show promoter booked Steve Harvey and Cat Williams to co-headline a New Year's Eve stadium show in Detroit. Cat entered his villain arc and challenged Steve to a comedy battle on the Jamie Foxx radio show. Steve versus show, Cat to which Steve in a accepted. fucking comedy You're battle, dog. Comedy as long as Nigga, Cat would fucking wash the shit out of Steve. Is this nigga serious? Get off stage. I need you to understand that that's your final time <laughs> as the king of comedy. I hope you got a team of writers. You're going to need about six or seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring Sean McDonald. You can bring everybody who listens to your radio show. They're going to see the truth. And its name is Cat Williams. Consider yourself warned. What was supposed to be just a comedy show is now some sort of 1v1 battle dubbed the championship of comedy. And Steve responded with this. I'm not saying he's in trouble, but I'm saying this right here, Jamie. A dog. Oh, we need some fucking don't bark at park. comedy battles. Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams because he is too famous and successful. So on New Year's Eve, Steve of course, got on stage Steve with and never big addressed ass teeth or made fun of Cat. That of course, with his big, big ass mistake. teeth, he not gonna fucking respond, bro. Of course, he's not gonna respond. Steve, Steve Harvey is not built like that, bro. 
Steve Harvey is the type of nigga that's like, that's probably like really, really funny to your like your grandma or some shit. <laughs> like Steve Harvey, bro, he not really, he not like that. He not like that. Yeah, the original king of comedy would probably be Richard Pryor. That nigga, that nigga smoking dick. Cat absolutely embarrassed Steve. He claims this was the end of got his ass the fuck up out of here. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. Then he only had he one. Stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of ten thousand people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in, and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Now, Cat isn't very accurate here. Steve had multiple successful arena comedy tours after the championship battle, and Steve was already bald by 2008, so Cat didn't really expose him for having fake hair. But is it a coincidence that almost immediately after Cat got on that stage and exposed his biggest hater in the industry, he started his crazy downward spiral? In November of 2008, Williams missed an appearance on Conan O'Brien and was later arrested that evening when officers found three handguns in his car while exiting rapper Jim Jones' studio in New York. That same month, he checked into the Mount Vernon Inn in Sumter, South Carolina. Shortly after checking in, employees reported was found definitely on a downward spiral around for a wearing while. just a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. When police arrived, Williams asked them for directions to the nearest hospital. There, his family convinced him to seek psychiatric help, to which he was eventually hospitalized. He just said that he doesn't trust anyone anymore, that everyone has turned against him. He wasn't really coherent. Pretty much after this, Cat wasn't seen again until 2011. No stand-up performances, no movies, no TV. The only time he was talked about was when he was- I had that whole fucking stand-up on my fucking, on my fucking PSP, bro. I just watched that shit all the arrested. time. In November word for word. Authorities arrested Cat in Coata County, Georgia, after he allegedly stole $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Things escalated in June of 2011 when he was arrested in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. He supposedly conspired with three women who attacked the man in his tractor. In 2012, Williams returned to the comedy world with his third HBO comedy special, Catpocalypse. Unfortunately, with the spot lie back on him, Cat fell back into a dangerous cycle as the bizarre behavior continued. In October of 2012, Cat and comedian Faison Love got into a heated argument outside of a Hollywood club over a $50,000 debt that Cat owed Love. During the argument, Cat proceeded to pull a gun on Love that wasn't loaded. On November 9th, his former assistant, Melissa Shag, claimed that he went into a rage and attacked her the month prior. Then police arrested Cat in Oakland, California on charges of suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he'd allegedly beaten an 18-year-old with a bottle. On November 16th at the Oracle Arena in California, Bro was on a fucking Cat took the stage while having a total public meltdown. For 15 minutes, he seemed to be under the influence, rambling about nothing while taunting members of the audience. Well, give me 20, nigga, that's how much the album costs, fuck boy. But I bet if you can walk to your car, I can show your bitch a dick she'll enjoy. So why don't you take your ass on over there, nigga, before I can catch you. Or you yeah, can pull your back out and I'll match you. But you ain't gonna do shit but get punched in the face. Then the audience began booing him. Yo, he was tweaking. <laughs> He was tweaking, dog. Your breath smells like Tom Ramen. Get the fuck out He was tweaking. We know you ain't got no money. We see your outfit, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, broke ass nigga. 
November 17, 2012, Williams got involved in a police chase while driving his three-wheeled motorcycle and failing to stop. Just a week later, Cat was arrested in Seattle, Washington after he <laughs> Bro, got into a dispute at a bar <laughs> this in the neighborhood. His arrest came after he missed that the first night pick. of a That's the kind of a classic. performance at the Paramount Theater. That same month, he slapped a Target employee in Sacramento for no apparent reason, which was made fun of on late-night television shows like Conan O'Brien. On December 28th, Williams was placed in handcuffs once again on child endangerment charges. Oh man, K, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cooler than a fan. My they took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, how I was, terrible is that? Cat's criminal history does not even come close to stopping here, but I'm sure you all get the point. He was spiraling hard for years, seemingly strung out on drugs or at least experiencing manic episodes. The media called him crazy, a crackhead, and didn't believe anything he was, he was saying tweaking. since they wrote him off as a madman. He was but tweaking. He says he was never under the influence. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you would like. I have far less play in me than you would like. There seems to be a pattern with comedians in the downward spiral. In 1990, Richard Pryor, who struggled with addictions to women and hard drugs, poured high-proof rum on himself and set himself on fire. Because everybody, widow, Jennifer Lee thank you Pryor, funny like all the time, bro. Like you dealing with some everything. real shit. In 1997, but Martin niggas find that shit funny. End of his hit sitcom Martin, as well as starring in the blockbuster film Bad Boys. That year, Lawrence allegedly had a meltdown in Los Angeles where he ran into Ventura Boulevard with a gun and threatened tourists and random people. What Sources claim. Martin began taking psychotropic drugs and having violent outbursts on the set of his movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Martin would continue his erratic behavior, getting arrested for gun possession and later going to rehab. Robin Williams openly spoke about his lifelong battle with addiction, alcoholism, and depression. Yeah, rest in peace, Robin Williams. Mark Maron has spoken publicly about Fucking having goop. severe depression. Artie Lang and Jim Norton as well. John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Greg Giraldo all died of drug overdoses. It's unclear why comedians seem to struggle with mental health more than others in the end entertainment industry while being tasked with creating the most light-hearted content. Deborah Sarani, a clinical psychologist who treats performers with depression and other mental health problems, said comedians often wear what we call the mask of depression, which helps them put on a more acceptable face to the world. But behind that mask, there is a terrible struggle going on. There is a exactly. stigma about depression and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Cat Williams has had an extremely rough life, starting with being homeless and alone at age 13. Combine that with and the chaotic Effects of it for a little constantly bit. being on the road, but he got himself nights, together. Though. Regular sleeping and eating schedules, the pressure to constantly deliver funny and engaging performances, as well as regularly dealing with hecklers and sometimes unresponsive. I feel like Cat bounced back really well. Mentally taxing, and on top of all of that, add the potentially evil Hollywood gang that Cat says is actively trying to get him to compromise his morals. But when he refuses, they blackball him and run smear campaigns to call him crazy. That is a recipe that would make any man go mad. So the question is, was Cat trying to escape an evil industry, or was he actually a drug-induced madman? Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. Go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house, too, <laughs> where this nigga want me to get an address. Man, man. Big Mama's and house has not aged anybody. well. Why is he? Big Mama's house is actual is fucking garbage. Cat didn't want to wear the dress. Brandon T. Jackson would go on to portray Martin. And niggas that say, no, it's not that bad. No, I promise you, it's just nostalgia. Big Mama's house is ass. Years later, Jackson <laughs> asserted that he did the project for money and was unaware of the repercussions it would have on his career. Did you get like slack? when you wore the dress at that moment. Only Cat Williams. Cat Williams was trying to That shit was probably right. funny to you when we was kids, but that shit is <laughs> actual cringe today. No, that shit is media, terrible. So he, was me. he was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. Everything went wrong. It's like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. 
Cat has been discussing yeah, this subject is for true. years because that nigga, been a that nigga that many have career definitely just went downhill after you put that dress Eddie on and Big Mama Tyler too. Perry, Jamie Foxx, Wesley Snipes, Chris Tucker, Arsenio Hall, Tracy Morgan, the Waynes brothers have all dressed up as women for TV or movie roles. Just before Kevin Hart exploded into fame, he also wore a dress on Saturday Night Live. And even 10 years ago, Cat discussed this. It, it's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. And nobody likes them. Cat also detailed an Illuminati meeting alongside Ludacris. There was a crossroads where we were both invited. I think the dress shit, I don't think it's really that deep. I don't think there's really no Illuminati shit going on with the dress shit. Maybe it is, but honestly, I don't think it is. I think niggas just wanted to put on a fucking dress because they thought it was funny. Because there's a lot of, even, not even black comedians, there's a lot of white comedians too that did the same exact thing. To an Illuminati thing and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's really hard to back up any of Cat's claims. And even if the stipulation of getting a $200 million deal is that you have to shave your head and sideburns, that seems like an extremely small compromise. And there are no indications that Ludacris ever sold his soul. I mean, he will tell you, he responded to Cat with a rap song. Never been Illuminati, only Illuminati, and I only left with when coming from any party afro with the sideburns he got my snap. signature addictions on the rise comedians check your temperature perhaps the most overlooked comment during the interview was cat's take on kanye west i suspect that we're pretty awful people in, if we there. say that somebody niggas is still doing it this, for real for real we watch what they do if you say somebody got special needs, niggas are still doing cross dress comedy. Holding them accountable like everybody else. The question of whether someone's actions should be judged differently due to mental illness is complex and multifaceted, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, ethical, and legal perspectives. Mental illness can significantly impact an individual's ability to understand the consequences of their actions, to make rational decisions, or to control their behavior. Kat is not excusing Kanye's behavior, and he definitely says he doesn't agree with what he says, but he's just questioning why people are surprised as his whole career he gave obvious signs, such as claiming that he was a god, and he was praised and uplifted for his outlandish behavior. Now, Kat has never publicly disclosed any sort of manic or psychiatric I am problems, a god. <laughs> but look at how much the world judged him when he was crazy 10 years ago. Versus now, he is saying the exact I'm still same things he was saying way. while he was Fuck crazy, but else, today he is more calm, coherent, and of course, entertaining. Now they are quoting his words as prophetic statements of a wise old genius. Funny how things change. Okay, that was a good video. Arms. Oh boy, jungle supplies. Jungle hey, CC, stay with the bangers. Jungle this fun, Barsanga. Right on, Lee Sumba.